using foam in, in, in the post, it works fine. This is still really nice and solid, right? It moved a good bit, but okay. When I put my wood on the face of this post, the wind, as it pushes against this, is pushing directly on this post. As long as the wind is only ever coming from one direction. This fence will last as long as that post doesn't rot out in the ground. Should be 40 or 50 years. There's no way this fence lasts 40 or 50 years. I don't understand how this is gonna look any semblance of professional. Today's video is brought to you by our good friends over at Nationwide Industries, the Fence Pros number one choice. And they are this Fence Pros number one choice for a couple reasons. One, we love using their Keystone Traverse latches. They're easy to install. You simply bolt them onto the post. No drilling for rods or cutting the rods required. It's a pretty straightforward installation process. We also love using their full line of galvanized hardware. It shows up quickly and reliably. All right, guys, today is the third installment of a series of videos where we're reviewing and reacting to a video titled Building a Backyard Privacy Fence with My Son by the Home Renovation DIY channel. If you'd like to watch the whole video in its entirety without my commentary, we'll link that in the description below. If you haven't watched the previous couple of videos, I'll catch you up uh, to this point. Jeff has uh, cut some sod out of the way. He's drilled some holes. He's set the post with Sika Pro Select to a questionable depth. And now he's going to go back through and run two by fours on it. We'll probably stop the video when he's done running two by fours. And then the final video will be him installing the pickets. And I think he applies some stain to it. So without further ado, let's get into it. My system here is the easiest install ever. Okay. That you don't have to worry about your post being perfect, the distance from the holes and you don't have to measure to the nanometer to set your pre-built fence posts in from the Home Depot. That seems to be the theme of this channel is it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's close, but it is the easiest way I can figure out how to slap something together. Not the best advice in the world, maybe, but maybe if you're looking for just the easiest, quickest way that kind of works, decent advice, maybe, I don't know. This is all built on the face and on the face. So everything we do is just nice and quick and simple. All we got to do is make sure we stay level. So what he means is the two before is going to be on the outside of the of the post. Now he said on, on the, the face, face on, the, on face. the face. So I guess he's talking about the two befores are on the outside of the post and then the pickets are on the outside of the two befores. So he's going to be, it's on the rails on the outside of the post. The alternate would be inset rails uh, where the horizontal members are attached in between the post. Not super common here, but maybe where, where Jeff's from is more common. So my system in to use the two by fours is the cross braces sufficient because now they're going to be the horizontal braces for all of your your wood that get yet installed, so it becomes part of the structure. This means that we don't have to buy something to then throw it out. Everything we bought here is gonna get used. In today's marketplace of material expense, there's something to be considered. I mean, you're probably only gonna save 20 or 30 bucks, but that's pizza, I mean. <laughs> Again, I don't know that this is a positive thing at all, uh, that you're using the same lumber to build the fence that you used to frame your post or at least uh, stabilize the post with. Using concrete or driving, either way, isn't going to require this work. Technically, the foam was supposed to cure up while you wait. You wouldn't need the structure on it anyways. So my system is actually kind of simple. I'm trying to get this board installed around the six to eight inches from the top, okay? When I'm screwing my fence boards on or nailing them on, I like to be six inches from the end. It helps to minimize the risk of the wood splitting. Yeah, so a six inch reveal is what he's talking about. For ASCM standards, you want six inches from the top of your picket to your fastener. And the same thing on the bottom, from six inches from the bottom of your picket to the fastener. It reduces warping and twisting. It just makes the fence look nicer, gives it more support. Sometimes you'll see contractors leave eight or 10 inches or more from the top of the two before to the top of the picket. And that's usually when you see the pickets, instead of being nicely aligned, start coming in and out. My goal is to get that kind of in the middle of the post. That certainly looks more than six inches. So what Jeff was saying in the last video was that all these posts are set six feet out of the ground. If the post is six foot out of the ground, he's using six foot pickets, it stands to reason that that is much more than a six inch reveal. Using things like measuring tapes 
are always a good idea to make sure you're getting them exactly where you're wanting to. Now, I guess the purpose of this build is the easiest build, so you're not having to actually measure anything, but it would be a good idea. Now, this is to get started, okay? My next rail, as this ground goes down a little bit, it's gonna be down a little bit further and so on and so on, and that's fine. It's all on the face. Part of the benefit of custom building fence though is that your fence can follow the terrain. What he's talking about is stair-stepping his rails down, which is common if you're using the pre-built panels that he was just railing against earlier. The benefit is that these rails can follow great. You know, if these posts were set to height, like he said they were, he could simply measure six inches down on every post and his rail would follow the terrain. What I'm looking for is privacy. And my biggest enemy is wind, right? So using foam in, in, in the post, it works fine. This is still really nice and solid, right? It moved a good bit, but okay. Not trying to hold back a stampede of rhinoceros, just the wind. Wind load is a real thing though. I mean, and Jeff should know this. I mean, I, I understand like stampeding, stampeding rhinos, whatever. If you get high winds, I've seen it, at least in our area, in the Midwest of the United States. I mean, there's absolutely been fences blown down uh, by wind damage. The force is real. When I put my wood on the face of this post, the wind, as it pushes against this, is pushing directly on this post. As long as the wind is only ever coming from one direction. Again, maybe in his region it does, but we typically get winds from each and all direction throughout the year. So for us in the summer, wind comes from the south. From in the winter, winds come from the north. So you're winning one battle to lose the other. Just as long as you use strong fasteners, this isn't really an issue. Post is not going to snap in half because of the wind. This fence will last as long as that post doesn't rot out in the ground. Should be 40 or 50 years. There's no way this fence lasts 40 or 50 years. I would love to do a look back on some of his older work to see how those fences look now. I basically put the 2x4 right in front of my eyes as a top post. I'm 5'10". This is kind of like, you know, 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, his measurements cracked me up. So in the last video or the post editing video, he did the whole... Here's the top of my head, and he went to measure his post, but he actually like measured up like my kids do when they try to ride rides they're not supposed to. He's He literally has a tape measure in his hands. Why he's saying he's lining it up with his eyes, it's, I don't know. So what I'll do is I'll come down here, and I'll just kind of go in front of my face. While he's holding the tape measure, just me if these posts are all set to height, like he said they were, you can measure down six inches and you're done. That's where the board's gonna go, all right? But I'm gonna start it here, a little bit lower on this one. Ah. This time, we're gonna just measure it off first, okay? Wow, that's actually almost perfect. I'm just gonna go with that. Look at that post moves next time he tries to rest this on it. This is why you don't use post foam for your fence post. If it was a little bit too long, you can cut it. If you set your post on eight foot centers, you never worry about cutting. He, he always makes these arguments that you don't need to really measure for your post. Now, if, if you watch the first video uh, where he set the post, he ended up having to move several of his posts because they weren't set right because they weren't drilled right. So take some time, lay it out correctly. Eight foot centers means you're not gonna have to cut your rails. Beautiful things about this kind of fence build. I don't have to have all of these posts eight feet on center perfect. That post moves when he was just writing on it. Every time you don't have to drill a hole or put in a post, you're saving money, right? So, most fences, you've got to have all these perfect on center. It takes an insane amount of time to line it out. It doesn't. There's tools. The equalizer by Mr. Fence is one. I don't get paid to promote his stuff. It's just a nice tool that instantly shows you equal sections that are, and you can buy them in different, whether you want them 8 foot or 10 foot on center. It doesn't take an insane amount of time. It actually takes less time than re-drilling the holes you didn't get right, like Jeff had to do the first time. Working by yourself is easy when you got a good clamp, okay? Guys, that's what you want to get. See, now Jeff is measuring the level of the entire 2 before. 2 befores are going to have crowns on them. It's just the nature of the wood. By trying to take the measure of the entire rail instead of just half the rail or less, you get a better idea overall of how level that rail is instead of just a smaller section of the rail. A little bit more. Remember, I told you. It's nice to be able to have everything right in front of your face. And if you can't, make sure you go back to it. Okay. Or actually, a little bit lower. There we go. 
so he's going to come back and nail pickets on this. Like I said, we'll review that in the next video probably. But the picket that goes over this, how... I don't understand how this is going to look any semblance of professional. And that the, There's going to be a picket come close to this intersection, right, where these where this one rail steps down. So are the, you then going to set the pickets down to match it? He had talked about the six-inch reveal, which... I agree, is absolutely important. But which of these do you measure off of for the six inch reveal? I mean, does each panel step down all the pickets? I don't know how this is gonna end up looking. So that's the top plate and I'm just gonna keep on doing that. This one is coming down a little bit and then a little bit. We'll do it in sections, no big deal. Let me show you the middle and the bottom now. You could also, if you're worried about your top line, if these posts were set to height, you could measure six inch down on each one of them. That'd be great, even if they weren't. So sometimes you will use a taller four by four. If there's a lot of ground movement, we'll use, you know, instead of an eight foot, we'll use a 10 foot four by four. Uh, we'll leave them wild, which just means they're not cut. They're where we know they're gonna be tall. We're gonna cut them afterwards. So you could actually use a string line and set it every post or every other post to the height you're looking for so that you can roll it with the terrain. It's typically b nicer to look at when you're done. It's a better finished product than the stair stepping or, or eyeballing it, especially if it's not something you do as a profession. Listen, I know there's fence guys out in there in the world that can eyeball everything in and they do it really well. Um, but if we're talking about content geared towards a DIY type project, I wouldn't leave it up to your eyeballs. It's not if it's not something you do all the time. A string line is a great way to visualize the top line of the pickets. If you get the top line, if you're two by four exactly right, you can always measure six inches and know that your pickets are gonna follow the exact same line. Um, with this, he's gonna have to float the two, the pickets down to that next step, or maybe he just just gonna step them, you know, whatever that three inches down is. I would suggest using a string line to save yourself some trouble later on, and ultimately have a fist that you're proud of how it looks. Again, this isn't rocket science. I make it easy on myself. I put this one where my belt is. Where your belt is isn't necessarily a great measuring tool either. You would you could measure six inches off the ground, set your bottom rail so that you know you've got your bottom six inch reveal. Measure the distance between the two. Your middle rail will go in the middle of those two. There are jigs out there to where you can set it on the top rail. It places your middle and bottom rails, typically what we use just to speed this up, but using these random landmarks like your belt buckle or something there are better ways there are more professional ways if if the idea of this content is to teach someone how to do a fence correctly how to install it correctly and semi-professionally using landmarks like light it up with the level with your eye and the middle with your belt buckle we can do better now making all this level is not going to affect the installation or the integrity of the fence at all but I'm only finishing one side, so when people look at it from the other side, it's nice if everything's horizontal, lined up, and level. Uh, and then when you put in your fasteners, if they're big in a show, it's nice to have them all looking uniform, okay? Taking the time to make sure everything looks level is the difference between a job that looks like quality or a job that looks like you did it yourself. I think we'll end it here. Uh, it's a good stopping point with that quote. As a professional fence builder, I typically look at the horizontal line, so he's not wrong there, but a fence that stair step like this is a surefire sign, at least in our area, uh, that it was built by a homeowner or by a handyman type contractor. Do yourself a favor, take a little bit extra time, make everything flow nicely together instead of trying to stair step it down like this. I think you'll be happier with the result. Stay tuned. The final part of this will be watching uh, Jeff put pickets on and then stain the uh, end result to make sure that you catch that video uh, make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on so that youtube lets you know when we upload new content several times a week for now i'm joe Ivers, the fence expert reminding you that good fences make good neighbors and i'll catch you next time